on the road trip. Here we are. Here we are, Slatsy. Where are we? Wollongong 2515. We have come to meet Saul Griffith of the Electrify Everything movement. He was a climate advisor to Joe Biden. And Saul is teaching us how we need to do everything to get all, all our old machines off fossil fuels. So our cars, our gas cooktops, our gas hot water. Yeah. Move them to electric versions. Wow and then make sure that electricity is all coming from renewable sources. Okay, let me see if I get this. It's uh, get off the gas, reduce your energy needs, and if you do need to use energy, then why not use renewables? Correct, we're gonna save money and we're gonna save the planet at the same time. Well, let's step on the gas. Slatsy, this is an electric car. Have you heard of Pearl Jam tomorrow? It's Armageddon. Vega, this shot doesn't work, does it? Take no prisoners. Saul Griffith, take one. Doggo, it's really, it's not gonna work. Rolled up. <laughs> the little star umbrella, it's, it's King Choice. <laughs> you are so metal right now. <laughs> yeah. Who are you? Why am I interviewing you? I'm Saul Griffith. I think I'm being interviewed because some people have claimed I'm a thought leader, but I wrote a book called Electrify and a book called The Big Switch. I've worked in clean energy my whole life and I'm an advocate for electrification as the nearest term solution we have for climate change. So why do we need to rewire Australia? We built our economy in Australia on fossil fuels. Literally at the beach, half a kilometre to my left, you can see coal in the cliff face. We know that we can't burn any more of that if we're gonna to get to zero emissions to make sure that the beaches don't get inundated with sea level rise. And because of that, you need to look at how can you have the type of society we want without the emissions. And our only real strategy is to electrify all the machines we own and power them all with renewable energy, namely wind and solar. So keep cups and canvas bags aren't gonna cut it to reduce climate change. Energy has to be our focus, right? Yeah, the great driver of climate change is our emissions from our energy sector. The other is from our agricultural sector. And keep cups and recyclable bags really is, it's worth doing, but it's not gonna change the climate outcome. To do that, you gotta change the infrastructure of your life. That means electrifying your car, it means electrifying your house, it means powering it with sunshine and wind and renewables. How quickly should we be replacing our cars and our home appliances with clean electric appliances? At this point in history, we need a philosophy of fix it when it fails or replace it when it ends. So that means your next car needs to be electric. Your next stove needs to be electric. Your next water heater needs to be electric. If we do all of that, we'll have eliminated all of our emissions from residential commercial sector by about 2040, and that's commensurate with doing about a 1.8 degree warming of climate change. Electrified 2515, the world's first all electric community right here in Wollongong. Can you explain that to me? So we really need to go fast on climate change. We need to fix the regulatory environment of the grid. We need to iron out the last kinks of their technology. So we've been promoting Electrify 2515. Let's run that experiment in a real Australian community with real households and real families and do it right away as a prototype for the future. So we've already begun on that. We've got the Wollongong City Council behind us. We've got New South Wales State Government behind us. We've got the federal government behind us. The households want to do it and it's an extraordinary incubator if you like for the future of the Australian energy system and we're excited that this year we'll break ground on becoming the world's first community to transition to zero emissions. What's your plan to power our lives with the healthiest cheapest energy ever? So the extraordinary success that Australia uniquely has is our rooftop solar. It's a little miracle. It's the cheapest energy delivered to a retail customer in the history of humans. So our sunshine on your roof is electricity of about three or four cents a kilowatt hour. So how will households be saving up to 5K by 2030? If you can use that extraordinarily cheap solar on your roof to power your car, that'll mean it'll cost you one to two cents a kilometre to drive instead of 20 or 25 cents if you're using diesel to do the same job. It'll mean it'll be one cent to boil your kettle in the morning on rooftop solar as opposed to 10 cents if you're using natural gas. If you add up all of those savings over the year, we can predict that by about 2030, every Australian household will be saving three to $5,000 a year compared to what they're spending today. The economics are in favor of the solutions. And really it's a question of how do we help every Australian afford the solutions. Electrifying everything, it sounds like it's gonna save us money in the long run. How do we pay for it now? If you're a, a big household today and you can afford the upfront prices, 
you will save the investment back over the next 10 years because you use a lot of energy, so you'll be saving a lot of energy. But not everyone is a big household. You might only have one or two people in it. You're not a huge energy user. You don't have the cash to buy the solar. You don't have the cash to buy the electric cars. So it's harder for you to participate. And quite frankly, we need to understand that solving climate change is a public good and we need public policy. That means federal government incentives, state government incentives, even local government programs that help everyone afford the future. The poorest households in Australia actually stand to benefit the most. They're the ones struggling with their energy bills, particularly now we have a cost of living crisis. So actually helping low income Australians join this future earlier is going to have the most substantive um, positive effect. How do uh, zero interest and green loans work? There's a lot of different ways to think about this. I think in Australia we had one of the most progressive ways of funding education of anywhere in the world. We invented the Higher Education Contribution Scheme. That's called an income contingent loan. So it's a loan where you, you get something that's a public good, which is education, but you only have to pay that back once you're earning enough money to pay it back. No one exactly knows what the answer is, but we need something like HEX for helping every Australian household. So we know that you're going to save this money in the future, so how do we sort of have a savings contingent loan, if you like, so that we can help low-income households afford the kit they need to live the lives they want to lead while saving energy and saving the climate. Once you understand that you gotta change the infrastructure of your life, and I use the word infrastructure carefully, we need the Australian government to understand that our households are the future of our energy infrastructure. The majority of our energy will be generated on our rooftops. The majority of the battery will be the batteries in Australia's 20 million cars. So that's where it will store that energy. That's much, much bigger than Snowy Hydro and the rooftops are as big as all the giant renewables developments will do. Once you can call it infrastructure, you can think about financing it the way we finance infrastructure. Governments have done this forever. They give special loans to financing infrastructure. The closest analogy to what we need happened actually in the Great Depression in 1936. Roosevelt invented the modern mortgage, in effect declaring American households part of national infrastructure, giving a loan guarantee from the federal government and special low interest rates so that Americans could afford to buy homes. We need to do something like that for renewable energy where the government backs every Australian household getting special access to infrastructure quality financing so they can afford to get a green loan to buy the electric vehicles, the solar, etc. because we know they'll save money over time, they'll spend that money elsewhere in the economy. If we want to have a thriving economy, we need to understand that the future of our energy infrastructure is in our driveways and on our rooftops. Around about a third of Australian households are renters, a third own a mortgage and a third own their home outright. So we've kind of, with the loan guarantees and the loan systems, we've described methods for two thirds of Australia. What about Australia's renters? What about the people who, don't, who live in multi-tenant housing, they don't have a giant roof? They're gonna to have to participate in other ways. Remember that the biggest savings will be from driving an electric car and the bigger savings again will be driven when they can purchase cheaper electricity. We need to reform the rules of the Australian electricity market so that your neighbour's rooftop can power your car, but you don't have to pay all the transaction costs of the grid. If we had something like that, we should be able to halve the cost of retail electricity for all of the customers in Australia. And if we use that cheaper electricity to power those electric cars, even the renters are going to be participating. We also need the government to incentivise landlords to make sure that the landlords are electrifying the housing stock of Australia. What's so good about having an affordable, healthy and energy efficient home with no energy bills? The reduce, reuse, recycle idea that has pervaded the environmental sector really has meant that the environmentalism hasn't got very far in terms of public opinion. You might summarise it as, if we all suffer just a little bit more, we'll make the future just a little bit less shit. Whereas what we really need to engage with is an idea that there is enough and the way to this clean energy future is actually through abundance. We've been struggling with the idea, let's just work a bit harder to get to 100% renewable. That won't work. You need 150% renewable. We have 150% fossil. Half the coal fleet isn't even working any, at any time. So we need 150%. That turns out once we get to 150%, there'll be long periods of every day where electricity is nearly free. There'll be long periods of the year in the summer where we'll have giant excess. So we could be living in a future where 
we have energy abundance. It'll be a lot cheaper. The houses will be more comfortable. We won't be poisoning our children and causing respiratory illness by burning natural gas, AKA methane inside the house. There's only wins here. Lower energy bills, improved health. Let's do it. Here's my favorite part. In 60 seconds or less, Saul, tell me why and how we're going to electrify everything. Your time starts now. We're going to electrify everything by aligning all scales of government in Australia, understanding that regulatory is a big part of the problem. The governments are going to back the households as Australian energy infrastructure, and we're going to help every Australian household make sure that every next purchase of a car or an appliance is a clean electric machine, and we're going to power it with a clean grid with smart controls that make it all work. That's about 43 seconds, so well done. I want 17 second discount on this question. <laughs> so where should I start? There's a lot of great resources in the great website in the sky. I'm pointing at it. You could go to the new Joneses, you could go to Rewiring Australia, you could make an electrification plan for your household and figure out how over the next decade you'll get your family to zero emissions with lower costs of energy and healthier, happier children. Saul, that was uh, shockingly great and uh, absolutely electric. Thank All you right, very one much. Take. <laughs>